You guys see this drill right here, this cheap Ryobi Home Depot drill and this one battery. These right here built my entire van. Everything in the van is completely handmade. The cabinets, the table, all of the woodworking, there was nothing that we bought and just put into the van. Everything here was designed with a purpose and it took me about six months to build, largely on the weekends and after work. And I really had absolutely no experience with any of this stuff. So this video might be a little on the long side, but I really wanna kinda of go into some detail with how I built the van and the things I used. So please feel free to skip around to specific sections that you'd like. But this is the cab area here. So I wanted to start with kind of like the most basic part of the, the van. I haven't really done anything in this area. Luna is a 2013 2500 diesel Sprinter van. She is rear wheel drive, so she's not all wheel drive. And I bought her with about 55,000 miles on her. And right now we have around 71,500. And now we move into the first part of the van here, which is the actual kitchen area, right as you come in from the main slider door. One of my priorities when building the van was to have a really functional sort of high quality kitchen that reminded me of just a residential kitchen. So nothing that was too clunky to operate or having to move a bunch of stuff around. I just wanted something that was just kind of always open and really easy to use. So the kitchen here is made up of some butcher block. I have a really deep kind of full size sink so it's easy to do dishes and just sort of have an area to work. I have a purified sort of drinking water set up uh, and then a um, whole faucet here and then a little uh, soap dispenser here and then a two burner stainless steel stove that works really really well this is just powered off a propane tank underneath the garage area and then I have some subway tile that again I just got from Home Depot almost everything in here I got from Home Depot I also put um, an under cabinet light up here which really comes in handy for early mornings and stuff like that all of the cabinets in the van were completely hand built they were probably the hardest part in my opinion for the van just because of the getting the fit to, to be right and the doors to line up. Like these were definitely kind of the most finicky thing of the whole thing. But all of the cabinet is made out of half inch birch plywood. And this is kind of just the natural look of it. I ended up just staining it with some polyurethane, but I kind of like the, just the, the natural sort of Scandinavian design and look that the birch had. This first cabinet up here is really just cooking stuff that I have spices, um, sort of like olive oil. I have like all my coffee stuff up here and then just other cooking utensils. So that way, like I'm here cooking and then just everything I need is right above, um, right above the stove for just like easy sort of access. And then the second one back here has things like plates and bowls, coffee cups, and then all of my toiletry stuff. So I'm almost more stuff like over the sink. So this way I have kind of everything I need that I would use here right above where I would actually use it. The last part of the kitchen is this sort of base area here. The frame of this is actually built out of hickory. Hickory is a really, really hard wood. So it just holds up really nicely. This first one here is just um, a small little utensil drawer, um, forks, spoons, things like that. So this worked out really well. This is just a false sort of front because the sink runs so deep that I couldn't put anything in there. And then I have a 65 liter Dometic um, fridge freezer. The reason why I went with a normal fridge freezer rather than something like the chest fridges, which are known to be more efficient and just kind of keep cold better is simply because um, I wasn't too worried about my battery and the efficiency. And I wanted something that just felt more like a home fridge. The fridge is totally empty because I haven't really been living in the van at all, but but you can see it's not the biggest fridge, but it definitely fits two or three days worth of stuff. And that's really all I need at a time. And then the mini freezer up top. So, and then on the bottom here below the fridge is a, another sort of pull out, a little bit more heavy duty drawer here where I can keep pots and pans, little things like that, cutting board. And then lastly, underneath the sink here, probably the most, <laughs> eyesore of all of them is um, kind of where I keep all of my water set up. So I really just use a basic water system where I have a five gallon or a six gallon jug, I'm sorry, of fresh water and then a seven gallon gray water tank. And basically once I run out of one, I know that this one is about full. So I have to manually sort of dump them out. So it's not really any sort of advanced water system, but I do think it's, it's nice for the winter because I'm not really worried about stuff freezing because I just have access of it all right here. And then in the back there, it's really dark. You 
you can see um, my water filter back there. Um, then also my water pump for my sink is down there as well. That operates off 12 volt. I set the water system up so I can basically swap out those um, fresh water jugs. And in the garage, I have room to keep about three or four of those. So if I'm completely full and I'm really going out to live in the van or on like a long trip, I could really take up to anywhere from like 20 to 25 fresh gallons of water. And then like I said, just switch them out and dump the gray tank um, at the proper dumping stations um, when I get to that point. And the last thing up here in the van is this swivel seat. I had to put a swivel seat base in. So now the seat, like it says, swivels inwards and now it really opens up the actual living space here. So when I'm parked, um, this is a great spot just to expand the rest of the the area up into the cab here gives another seat here. Can also look out the window. So this is a really cool spot as well um, that I think for the money swivel seats are way worth it. One of the last things that we did here just kind of by like accident almost was in order to kind of create some depth to the van, we ended up stepping down this whole thing here. And this actually turned into a really cool like mini storage cabinet here. Um, and it also kind of works as a seat and also as a outside table when you're outside. So this area is super versatile and it's kind of like this three in one area that was kind of like a happy accident but it ended up working out really well. The ceiling is just 3 8 inch pine tongue and groove that I just sealed with polyurethane like three or four times. So it's really nothing special. The ceiling is actually really, really thin. But the reason why I did that was just to preserve the ceiling height. I could have probably went with an inch or something just to be more heavy duty. But then you're really just adding extra weight to the van and also just slowly minimizing clearance in the van. So this is all just pine tongue and groove. And I have about, I think, 10 LED lights that are on different circuits here. I basically have, um, I have like a kitchen set here. And then I also have a set back in the bedroom. Before we move on to the back of the van, I wanna talk about all of the electrical. I did all of the electrical myself, all of the wiring. So all of my electrical is basically controlled right here with these switches. Like I showed, I have um, the kitchen and sort of bedroom lights on their own switches. I have lights in the garage, lights outside. Then I basically put all of my main appliances also on switches. So I can turn the fridge on and off for times where I'm not using it. I don't have to worry about disconnecting a fuse or anything like that. Um, I also have my water pump on a switch, the WeBoost cell receptor. Then I also have my actual power outlets on switches as well. And then below here is my actual inverter, which allows me to have normal um, power that you would have in your house um, with just like a wall outlet. So basically I have to invert the power from DC from the batteries to AC um, current. And that's done by a 2000 watt inverter and everything is housed in this area here. This little grate that you see right at the bottom of this, the frame there, um, it's just to give everything some ventilation. I have um, another vent sort of on the front here, but I have two 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries and then a 2000 watt inverter charger right above it. So all of my battery stuff is done right here. It's mainly powered by 320 watt solar panel on the roof, but I also have it hooked up to the sort of alternator of the actual van. So when I'm driving the van, it's also charging the batteries here. So I really never have to worry about power because between all the solar on the roof um, and chart and like just driving, the van usually gets a ton of, of charge. I don't really have to worry about it. The lithium batteries are also just absolutely amazing. They're super expensive, but I think it's totally worth it over normal, just like AGM batteries. Also my inverter here, um, I can plug into the wall and it will also charge everything. So I really, it's kind of confusing, um, but I have three main ways I could charge the batteries. But for the most part, I don't do anything. It just charges by the solar um, and everything works really well. Just to show you guys the last sort of components of all the electrical, this is where all the electrical is ultimately is housed. I have my charge controller down there, a bunch of fuses, junction boxes, wires. You can see my DC fuse panel there, um, inline fuses, and kind of all leads down this way into the battery. My battery voltage is 14.2. I'm fully charged. Um, that's kind of the overall life of the battery. So I have about 200 amp hours. Um, and then how many amps I'm pulling in and charging right now. So it's actually getting some charge from the sun for amps. Um, and that way with this, I can just sort of get really quick sort of monitoring of the battery system. Um, and it's actually really, really easy to use and set up. And then while I'm here, 
Um, this is just my heater controls that turn on the, the diesel heater. And then you can see the little USB ports that I have. And then wall outlets is kind of what's, what's on this wall here. So I guess that kind of transitions us nicely into the actual sort of bed living area. Walls back here are made out of, I think it was three eighths inch shiplap. I can't even really remember at this point, but it's just shiplap again from Home Depot. I just think it adds a really clean look and it's super easy to install. And I just painted it. Um, it's called Chantilly Lace from Benjamin Moore. The way the table works is basically there's this piece of hickory that I keep underneath the bed here. Basically there's a little catch on the floor and I can just slide this down and it sits in the actual catch on the floor just so the pole doesn't get sort of kicked out or anything like that. And then this is just a gate latch here. Um, so once I remove the carabiner for a, carabiner for a safety, um, I can just sort of release the gate latch here and the table falls and you can see um, the pole right there. The table will just sit nicely on the pole. And now you have a uh, just a complete folded out dining table, a little workspace, whatever you need. Um, it's pretty secure. And again, totally handmade. To put it back, you just kind of lift it up. It will secure nicely there. And then you just remove the uh, hickory pole out and you're good to go. The last feature here in the dining room is this entire oak top that we kind of went over with the electrical. But if you look back here, there's just a ton of storage. I really keep dry food here, whether it's soup or rice, protein bars, um, whatever it is, just because there's so much storage in here. And you can see it even extends to the back. And this one goes all the way down um, to the bottom. But this is again, this is just that same oak as the table and things like that. And this is just one big strip um, that just allows me to, to put stuff there and um, will actually serve its primary function is to serve as the support for the bed. So now that we've went over the kitchen area and sort of like the main daytime area, I'm gonna show you guys how I go down to bed mode and how that whole thing works. It's really on a slot design and sort of done in three different ways. I'm gonna do this backwards so it's easier to show you guys, but underneath the bed here, this is built into three different sections. So you can see, basically I can pull this up. This is the first section, it's small. It's only three one by twos, um, but this will basically slide out come here and rest on the oak top on the other side. And then the main section here is a little bit bigger, um, but I can pull this entire section out, rest that on the side. So now you can start to see how the bed is gonna work. And then lastly, there's just one final section here that I pull out, put on the side here. And then essentially this is a full size futon mattress. Um, so then this, literally just slides down and it's as simple as that. And now you've went from a couch to a full size bed. And then behind the bed is another section of this oak here that we kind of um, had to use to support the bed and things like that. But instead of just wasting this space, we built it into three different sections here. Um, this first one is just a little, I call it like a little bedside table because it's easy to access stuff once the bed is down. The second, and the bigger one here is actually for all of my linens. So you can see the sheets, the duvet, all that stuff is kind of clunky and hard to store when you don't want to use it. So this middle one allows me to really just stuff stuff down there, not have to worry about it. And the last one here, I actually don't use that much. I don't really know what it could be for, but it actually goes right down to the bottom of the van, kind of hard to see. That one is still to be determined, but it was originally planned for laundry or stuff like that, just when you have dirty stuff, towels, but you guys get the, the general idea of what this whole thing is. And what's nice is I can just leave the bed down if I'm feeling lazy one day or I just wanna get on the road in the morning. I don't have to put the bed up to drive. The bed can stay down for as long as I want. Underneath the bed is what I like to call the garage. It's basically just a big space where I can keep things like skis, chairs, whatever I need. Um, so what I did here on the alleyways, I built a sort of side access to get into the garage so I don't have to always go outside to access things. I also put two LEDs in the garage area that you can see here. So that if I just need to access something quickly, I can get it here from the side. You can see the propane tank that feeds up to my stove. Um, and this is where I can keep some extra water jugs if I need it. While I'm down here, the floor is just some vinyl hardwood that I got from um, Home Depot, it's life proof stuff. So it's water resistant, scratch resistant, all that sort of stuff that you would want in a van. Um, but it's super easy to lay down, actually just sort of all clicks into place. Um, but this is the inside view um, of the garage.
So now moving on to the outside of the van, which is actually probably one of my most favorite parts of Luna. First thing with the wheels and tires there, I did put on bigger wheels um, and obviously some, some sort of all weather snow tires, things like that. They are a 17 inch wheel up from the 16 inch that comes stock on the Sprinter. And the tire size is a 275 and it's the BF Goodrich KO2s. Secondly, I drove out to San Diego to the Illuminous um, shop over there and they installed this front sort of rush guard slash light bar here. It's not really um, a super heavy duty front bumper, uh, but it is a nice sort of aluminum piece where I can mount some lights to the front here and just give me a little extra protection on the grill if I were to hit a deer or an animal, things like that. But it really adds to the custom look um, of the van. Another thing we added to the van were these outside docking lights. You can see that one right there. And then there's also one here um, on the rear corner right there. These docking lights are really nice in the summer when you're like driving down and you get to your campsite or things like that to just give you some extra light to see what's going on basically. And now one of my most favorite additions to the van are these luminous rear boxes. And they're basically two huge storage boxes. Just to give you guys a quick sort of look and decide what I have in them. This one is mostly just um, tools and stuff like that. So I have some oil, some diesel exhaust fluid, electrical stuff, whatever, just some basic tools, extension cord, things like that. Stuff I just don't want in the van itself, some chemicals, cleaners, things like that. And this one is a little bit more empty, but this one has um, tools, bucket, shovel, jumper cables, little stuff like this. This one I still need to kind of work on, um, but you guys get the sort of point and idea with them. And then something that we just did yesterday, um, which I'm really stoked how they came out, was we mounted these traction boards on the side of the boxes here. I wasn't really sure how we were gonna do this, because the boards are actually bigger than the box. So you weren't necessarily able to use the designated mounting holes, but we still we still made it work. They're super solid. And now I'm able to have these traction boards um, on the side here, because I really didn't want to have to put these in the van if I didn't have to. And then lastly, on the side of the van here is the Illuminous ladder. So I really have three components of Illuminous, the boxes, the front and the ladder, um, which just helps me get on top to access the solar panel and the cell booster and things like that. So up here on the roof, there's not too terribly much going on, but we have this, um, this is my cell booster here. So this just helps me get a little bit more cell signal when I'm in some dead areas. Here um, is a big 320 watt solar panel that basically just charges my batteries. And then right here um, is my fan, just get some circulation in, in the van um, and give me some ventilation when I'm cooking, things like that. But other than that, the roof is kind of quite plain. Now you can see how this all sort of comes full circle and now we're looking in the back of the van here. Underneath here is the garage. I just sort of have this flap to make it just kind of hide this stuff when the doors are open. But as soon as I raise that up, you can see there we are back in the garage. Um, and then sort of on the ends are these little, um, like little end cap storages here. Again, there's another outlet here. The idea with this was a boot heater. I haven't really used that as much, but I do have an outlet over there. Um, and then another little space here, an extension cord, so I can charge my house batteries, and then even my little cell booster antenna, which is hiding right back there. If you've been following along since season one, you really would have seen the entire transformation of Luna because she started as a complete messy work van. So I really had to go through all of the steps to get her even ready to be built out. I bought the van um, for $20,000 and it cost me about 10,800 or let's just say $11,000 to build out entirely. That's not really including the time it took me to do it, but that's really just the actual, the labor, the, the materials it took to build the van. So really right around 31 to $32,000 is what it cost me to get the van to where it is now. And I will say I'm extremely proud of that. And considering how much it costs for these pre-built vans, such as like the Revel and the Storyteller, some of those vans can get upwards of $200,000. For $30,000, I think it's a really good deal um, compared to what you would pay if you wanted a builder to do it for um, for you. So I am not an expert builder. I'm not an expert woodworker. I'm not an expert anything. I'm really just a kid who wanted to build a van and this was my attempt at it. So I'm sure you guys could do it better. I'm sure I could have done things differently. It's not really the point of this video. I hope you enjoyed um, just seeing sort of the thought process behind my layout and sort of just the van as a whole because I haven't really shown you guys how the van all works together. So thank you guys for watching. Please drop a comment if you have any questions, comments, or any ideas um, on how I can make the van build more efficient or better. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see all of you guys in the next video. Have a good week. Take it easy, fam. Peace out.